Canada has two political parties, more or less, the Conservatives and the Liberals. They're blended a lot. They overlap a lot. There's not a whole bunch of difference between them. The Conservatives, they use that word, but I don't know. They kind of tend to do more liberal things than conservative, I think, kind of, sort of, maybe, but they're blurred. So you know what? Uh, how do you describe them best? It's, I say it like a football team in the Canadian Football League. The, the league is divided into two conferences, but really, you know, it's kind of the same game, okay? And, and they play against each other and they figure out who's going to go for the Great Cup and then they play. But, but, you know, politically you have the corporate and welfare party really divided into two branches. Are you getting all this? It's kind of like the football league. You know, the liberals and the conservatives would be those branches, pretty much the same principles, same socialism, same people, same game. They, they cross the lines all the time, the party lines and the floors, I guess they call it, and, and, and on and on. We need a new team. We need a new player in the game th that has a different set of rules. There must be genuine principles. Uh, free markets, private property, limited government, small taxes, big opportunities, and liberty. And you need to have the right to enjoy the rights that all of these other governments have removed from you. Who can that be? In Canada, it can only be the PPC, which is the People's Party of Canada. It's odd. It's strange. It's kind of weird. It's a little frightening, too, because they, they can split the vote in terms of the conservative vote and their vote. But what does it matter? I mean, maybe true conservatives will go over to the PPC, because the Conservative Party, they're not acting like a Conservative Party anymore. I don't know, just a whole bunch of different stuff. I was in a Macy's store in Los Angeles last week, and I wanted to buy a couple of shirts. And a salesman, he's about my age, an old guy, he came up and said, can I help you? And I said, sure, I want to buy a couple of shirts. And, and we were going, and I said, somehow it came out that I was from Canada. And he said, I sure wish I lived up there. I like your leader because our leader's a nut job. And he went on and on and said, whoa, whoa, <laughs> don't get into politics with me. You want our leader? I'll swap you. The prime mistake over President Trump? No kidding. That's not a very fair swap for you, Mr. Macy. And, and he kind of went on and on. So, of course, I threw the shirts down and I said, have a nice day. He walks me to the door and says, hey, my wife always told me not to talk politics. I'm sorry. Come on back and buy the shirts. I, said, I wouldn't deal with you. You're a communist. Good bloody grief with all the things you said. And, and there's a whole bunch more that was said. Just thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> we all have our own opinions and that I do get. But when you're selling shirts, you probably shouldn't do that because half of your customers will put their shirts down and walk out the door. Hotels. Recently I was in a hotel as well and I went to get a room, gave him my credit card and he says, you have to have photo ID. They all do that. And I was in a belligerent mood and I said, I don't have any. And my ID is my credit card. Uh, and you take my money. I just want a room. I don't want to marry you or anything like that. And, and they wouldn't give me a room. <laughs> Whatever. I said, have a nice day. And I left, went to another hotel, showed them my picture ID and got a room. Politicians, you know what, in Canada, they should be fired by their writing board and then charged for fraud if they lie. It's a pretty simple thing, right? Uh, lies get people places. I mean, elect me and I'm going to cancel a GST. I get elected and then I go, ha, ha, and I don't cancel it. That would be Prime Minister Christian from many years ago. I mean, wow, he should have lost his job. He should have been put in prison. That's fraud. And, and he got elected, people think and say, because of that statement. And, and that's really, really bad. Liars need to be sent to jail, I would say. In the United States of America, the wall. Everybody talks about the wall, a barrier, a fence, pick your verbiage. And the Democrats, they don't like it. They say, we don't need a wall. Really? 266,000 arrests last year, criminal aliens have been carried out, including approximately 100,000 on assault charges, 30,000 for sex crime charges, and 4,000 for murder. At the present time, there's 180,000 illegal immigrants who live in the United States of America in defiance of court-ordered removal. <laughs> That's pretty scary numbers, right? I wonder what part of the word illegal Democrats can't sort out or understand. Good bloody grief. Y'all come back here tomorrow and uh, give us your comments. There's a solution in all of this. I'm always reminded of a little boy standing up in this huge pile of uh, horse manure, and he had a shovel and he was digging, and his dad said, what are you doing? And he was an optimist, little Johnny, and he says, there's got to be a pony under here somewhere. <laughs> and, and I know politically, We'll find that pony. There is a solution. Don't give up. And again, y'all come back. See ya.